So the, the traction from a parents is always there, and but uh, it's different stage, a different traction. So uh, 16 years ago, so when I was last year postdoc with uh, Yang Gang, and my parents were 60s, and they just retired, and they could live you know, alone without any anyone to help them. And uh, I think I decided to, if I can find a job uh, in the U.S., I can work. I just you know work in the U.S. for better career opportunities. And luckily, I got a job, and I decided to stay. And uh, you know, always the tension, right? In the U.S., can uh, always the you know, attractions different. Route. But now my parents are, are close to 80s, and they need elder care. Uh, so I, I have older sister. Elder sister is always be my elder sister who take care of my parents over the years, particularly out over the last 10 years. And uh, as the only son in the family, so I'm obligated to take care of my parents from Chinese culture. And I, have, I feel very sorry that um, I'm missing so many things uh, from parents in the past few years. My mom went through several big surgery. I, I wasn't there uh, with her. And uh, I feel very sorry. I, I don't want to feel really sorry if it's too late. Sure. So, uh, this, this, uh, I think what you're describing is a very uh, common common theme among many of us, many of our, us immigrants. Yes, absolutely. Right. That's right. Right. So I think now the traction from a parent side is stronger. And uh, I, I, you know, I appreciate my wife for understanding to allow me to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely need that. Yes. <laughs> So I think that's that's maybe that's the time I should go back to to China, and my parent, my, my mom, my mom currently living with me, so uh, oh. she's very happy. She's very very happy. nice. I'm very happy it worked out for you, uh, Hunching. So uh, so in West now that you moved in Westlake, uh, I know that when you started your career, you worked with I, I you worked first did your PhD with uh, Professor Casey Huang in China in Xinhua, and then yeah. you then you worked with his son Yongan for uh, right. many years. How was the right. difference? How was it like to work with for father and son? Okay, <laughs> interesting <laughs> question. So, uh, so uh, Yang Gang is very much uh, like his father from academic side, very rigorous, <laughs> very rigorous. Uh, and and, and uh, he needs an answer, he needs an answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that we know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, many of uh, his uh, former Colleagues who knows both the father and son, they have same same feeling, right? But Yun Gang is uh, another thing they are in common is uh, they are also both uh, warm-hearted. You know, they are very rigorous on, on research, but they they are willing to help on uh, on personal stuff, personal stuff. So that that's also another common thing. Very personal, very very personal. You can you can you can you can have a very intimate connection with both father and son. Right, 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 nice, good. So now, uh, right. when you so you came to uh, North, I guess you came to uni, uh, Urbana Champagne, right? When you joined Yonga, and of right. course, with both with Professor Casey Wang and then Yonga, your work was really theoretical uh, solid mechanics in the beginning, right? And the uh, uh, I think probably towards the end, uh, you were probably perhaps for the first few students uh, working with John and then Yonga to get into the stretchable electronics modeling area, right? That's my uh, privilege. That's my privilege. I'm the first few students uh, from uh, our members from Yang Gang's group to work with John on stretch for tonics. That's really my privilege. Yeah, and and then after that, I think I've now seen that uh, you, of course you have branched onto many new topics, including what you're going to present today. But you're doing a lot of experiments. Uh, so you were a theoretician before, and you started doing experiments. So how was how was that transition that happened for you? Well, this happened in Arizona, right? I'm assuming. It's happened in Arizona, right? And I appreciate, uh, you know, one person that uh, was uh, in John's group, uh, uh, Kang. John, do you remember Kang? That's the our first author of the science paper. Yeah, Dao Do Young. Yeah. Do he, Yang, he, yeah, Dao Young Kang. You know, he's at Yonsei University now. Right, right. And we still connected, and uh, uh, so uh, we usually go to uh, went to lunch together uh, to the Green Street, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the Korean restaurant. And he, he told me that the, the experimental, uh, some, some experiences he had and some details, you know, I, I thought, you know, I probably should do some experiment independently because <laughs> I can know the first hand, you know, uh, with, you know uh, results and I can do some, something new, you know, by myself. 
So uh, when I was on the market uh, finding a job, I, I, you know, I, the department chair usually asks what your support you need, right? So I, I, my answer is uh, I want to do some experiments. And I have, at that time, I have totally no idea, you know, how complicated the experiment can be and how expensive the experiment can be. I totally had no idea. And uh, when I was uh, uh, interviewed at uh, uh, Arizona State, they, they, they asked me, what, what kind of support do you have? What do you want? I, I, my answer is, I want to do the experiment. Like a very strict, very, you know, naive. And uh, the answer is, yeah, you can do. So how, how much do you need? The uh, answer is, uh, how about uh, $50,000? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> but they gave me, so I'm, I was very happy. So I, I started working on this. You know, I, I started with no lab, no lab space. And I, I used all my uh, $50,000 to, to purchase an optical microscope. And it started from there. I got my grant, uh, the first answer grant. I, I, I support other students and get to, you know, trade off with some equipment. And gradually, uh, instead of my, I, from the common area, start you know, doing some experiment in a bigger area and uh, gradually migrate. I will see currently, I can see uh, maybe 50-50 experiments versus uh, simulation modeling. Now, by doing this, it's really adventure. It, it is an adventure. So you can see a different world of, um, you know, if you, you have a new idea, you can give a try right away and you can do some uh, 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 theory guided uh, experiments. Uh, that, that's really uh, the, the, the benefits uh, learned from, from this. So did you learn a lesson? And when you negotiated with Westlake, I hope you did not ask only for fifty thousand dollars startup. <laughs> you know, talking about the, the, the package and everything, so uh, Westlake uh, offers a very competitive package in terms of uh, you know salary and startup, very competitive. Yes. So, so you, you have now, the, as you, you were describing in your motivation to move to Westlake, you, now you have the facilities to do a lot of things. Uh, perhaps some of them you could not easily have done even the, if you had stayed in the US. Uh, I will see uh, everything I, I can do here uh, probably can be done in the US, but not in the same way, same pace. So here is uh, Westlake is like a, a startup company. It's, it's very flat, very flat. And uh, the, uh, it's very different from many um, Chinese universities. Here, we have amazingly supportive staff, very dedicated, you know, work really hard to help us to, to make things move faster. Uh, so sure. currently I have uh, about uh, 10 members in my group in such, uh, you know, five months. Very efficient, very efficient. The staff is very, very helpful. And the equipment facility, I will see about uh, uh, is newer because the university is newer, so the equipment is newer, and uh, 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 so from that regard, it, it, it's faster. Right. But uh, there, that's, that sounds wonderful. Uh, so I, I know that we are probably uh, running against time, and I think very soon I think Jimmy will want to uh, I think give us a short introduction to email webinar. So uh, we have actually have a lot of questions for you, but uh, I'll just ask one right now um, and see if other sure. panelists have anything. The, uh, of course, we now know that it's public information that you are now the vice president uh, for uh, SES. So you'll be the president of SES next year, right? Right, next year. That's a very, very uh, congratulations on that. It's a very nice uh, responsibility. It's a wonderful organization and society. Thank so I'm you. Happy to see your, your full staff. Well, happy to see you there. Uh, so you have any special plans for the SES in the coming years? Uh, yeah, I, I think what, 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 one is interesting thing is I, I was discussing with uh, the current president, uh, Pedro Reyes. Uh, so he's the first president uh, resident in Europe. I will be the first one uh, in mainland China. So that one is thing true. I'm considering is uh, to make uh, ICS from a, a US, majority US based uh, society to a truly international society. Okay. So like, like at least we can do a, a you know, service, how many members from the US, how many members from different countries, right? So at, at least we don't have this database in the past. Right. Right. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good idea. Uh, we, I think largely the CS has been a US centric place, but it's a very good society, very good conference. 
So definitely very, expansion very, will be very more. dynamic society, but dynamic society. Very good. Yeah. Uh, the other panelists, uh, welcome to other panelists. I think I see many people. Any questions for Han Ching? Hi, Sulin. Hi, Jiga. Hi, Han Ching. I, I want to make a comment that uh, Han Ching probably the, one of the senior four professor that uh, relocated to China, uh, right in mechanic, from mechanics community. Yeah, uh, I'm not so sure about this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't find another one. And uh, from your description of your experience in West Lake, you are actually, uh, that's a very uh, motivative recruiting message from the, <laughs> from the panel. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the hidden agenda. You, you found it. <laughs> yeah, now what you have to do is invite some of us there to see your facilities, <laughs> see all the experiments that you can actually do. Yeah. So uh, we, are, we are moving to a new campus. Actually, my, uh, so the first page of my PowerPoint, my slides, is new campus. The new campus, we have the opening ceremony about uh, two weeks ago, and we, we plan to move in either uh, later this month or next month. Uh, so the, the facility will be ready to move in, and uh, the, uh, the, the post office will have a, a dorm, and the faculty have a housing options. So we are, we are quite excited about this. Good. So, so, so you think... mentioned uh, starting a uh, supporting staff. How does that work? So, you know, uh, in the US, right? We normally, oh, we, yeah. do not, we do not send emails to our, uh, you know, staff over the weekend or at night, right? So here is the November, <laughs> when is we send a message, got a response immediately. <laughs> so we even, you know, uh, at the uh, meeting at the dean's level, we, we told the staff, you do not, you don't have an obligation to, to respond right away. It's after five, you are, you are off work. Right? But they just so, so supportive to on lots of things, on hiring, on students, on, on staff, you know, on, 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 on space. So I, I, when I joined Westlake uh, University, the old campus, the, the campus was used to be a Westlake uh, Institute, right? So uh, advanced uh, research institute, the space already fully occupied. I have very small space. I started a, a, a very small space, and they are still very supportive. They give me a sign, you know, if I need a glove box, it's find a, the actual glove box for me, and it's very, very supportive, very, very thoughtful. Are they all supported by the university, or you you have to? Uh, uh put up some your own research funding to support them? Uh, that's, um, the, we have two different systems. The, the Dean's office staff, is, they all supported by the Westlake University. But I can also hire my own assistant. I see. I can, I can hire, you know, uh, staff, my assistant to take care of all this, uh, you know, um, miscellaneous stuff like uh, uh, reimbursement, the book ticket and uh, purchase equipment. I can I have another assistant to, uh, to help do some uh, programming, for example, on the embedded programming, which is not really research focused, but really engineering stuff. I can hire another staff for this, but it, they're all from my uh, startup package. And do you have to, um, you have to, I'm assuming you have to write competitive proposals or there's enough funding for you from the university that you don't have to worry too much about external funding? Uh, that, that's a question under discussion. So, um, <laughs> okay, we, so we do need to write a proposal that a uh, competitive grant to show that uh, Westlake is competitive, you know, internally, you know, in China to get competitive grant. Uh, that, that's most important to show that we can do that. From the financial uh, perspective, uh, probably we do not have this high pressure to get money eternally. I, I think, Good morning, uh, Hanchen. Uh, this is uh, Hai Chao Han. Uh, just want to introduce myself. We met, haven't met before. Uh, okay. I work on uh, cardiovascular biomechanics. So uh, your talk very interesting. Looking forward to your talk. Thank you very Very much. Nice to meet you here. Uh, Good to hear your story. Uh, Very impressive. Thank you. 
so J Jimmy, uh, do you need to start now or uh, we have time for another question for Han Ching? Uh, well, if uh, somebody has, uh, or you know, those people who are on the panel have questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise I can start the, uh, the slide. Why don't I start then? So it's just a question about the Xihu University. So they are they are simulating this uh, tenure tenure track. Oh, they use the old uh, Chinese way of permanent it's appointment. A, I will see that the tenure system is very much like uh, uh, what we have in the U.S. Okay. Very very much similar. And also the the teaching is very similar. The teaching, the the working language at West Lake is English. Oh really. <laughs> Even we have, a, we have a staff meeting, we have a town hall meeting with all the faculties, all staff, the language, the English. And the, our staff, our staff all have overseas experiences. Interesting. And many of them can speak fluent English. And teaching, student seminar, defense, comprehensive exam, uh, comprehensive exam everything is in English. Very nice. All right, uh, so uh, let me start by presenting just a few slides. Uh, this is the EML webinar and webinar series. And EML stands for uh, Extreme Mechanics Letters, uh, which is a journal started by several of us. Actually, I'm going to show that uh, in the next slide. And EML seeks to publish research of in in, in immediacy, depth, and originality. So uh, we have three editors in chief, John Rogers, Drew Gansu, and myself. All three of us are, are here today uh, to uh, participate or to listen to uh, Hang Ching's talk. We're very, very much looking forward to it. And we have uh, uh, five editors. And uh, Hang Ching is one of the editors, actually. Uh, Katia Bataldi from Harvard. Tung Li from University of Maryland, Martin City from Max Planck, and Sulin Zhang from Penn State. And we have a publisher from Elsevier, Rebecca Capon. Uh, let me highlight this time, uh, I would like to show some uh, previous EML webinars. Actually, we don't just provide the recordings of the presentations of the webinars but also we publish uh, webinar overviews. So uh, John Hutchinson uh, was the first one to give an EML webinar. And uh, that overview John wrote uh, was published in EML volume 39 in the year 2020. Uh, Xiang He Zhao, uh, oh, John, talked about new development in shell stability. And Xuan He talked about extreme mechanics of soft materials for merging human machine intelligence. That was also published in nine in 2020. And uh, we also had an EML webinar by Michael Dickey uh, from North Carolina State. And uh, he, uh, he talked about liquid metals at the extreme fascinating story. And uh, the overview was published in volume 40, 2020. Uh, and Michael Sheets uh, gave the first EML webinar for season two for this year. And uh, talking about mechanical stresses uh, kill tumor cells. And that was published in EML volume 49 in 2021. So you can see a wide range of different EML webinars. The purpose of publishing these overviews is to give you a chance to go back and read it and to look at the references. And if you want to cite some of these papers talked, uh, that were talked about during the webinar, you can easily find them. Okay, so uh, we started EML webinar series last year. Zhigang, why don't, why don't you give us some spiel of this? <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. So uh, the, the EML uh, started uh, 
uh, at the early day, in early days of uh, the pandemic. So we try to uh, make uh, uh, this uh, a good experience to build a community of mechanics. Because suddenly we have a platform, international platform automatically. And also every talk is recorded and made uh, freely available. Uh, so it has been quite a success. Also substantial discussion. We try to mimic some of the smaller conferences where uh, the uh, people, attendees can uh, stay over after the talk, talk to the speaker and talk to each other just to build a international community of mechanics and materials. Back to you. Thank you, thank you, Trigal. Uh, so, Jugang started EML webinar series and he even wrote a little uh, perspective or opinion uh, published in Matter, okay? It's, it's a matter of opinion. And so we continued, we have uh, the second season or season two of EML webinar. We decided to reduce the frequency, but uh, emphasize interdisciplinarity more. And uh, in addition to some of these uh, regular venues that we publicize EML, we also added, for example, we, we live stream EML webinars on YouTube, but we also added WeChat live streaming. And that was also very uh, successful. So uh, Mike Sheets, Michael Sheets, EML webinar attracted more than 12,000 viewers on WeChat live streaming. Okay. Uh, these are the season two EML webinars that we have organized. Hangqing is the latest one. Uh, we'd like to thank Hangqing and thank uh, Pradeep, Pradeep Sharma for uh, you know, being the discussion leader. We also did a social experiment uh, in the following sense. We, we ask ourselves the question, whether a webinar series like this can be self-financed, would there be enough people interested in this? So uh, this is the experiment that we did. Tong, you want to say a few words about sure. this? So I guess the short answer to Jimmy's question is yes. And uh, we've done this and uh, it has been uh, quite a success successful. Uh, uh, we really appreciate the uh, support and uh, help of our donors. Uh, their names are listed here. Uh, we have achieved uh, our goal for uh, season two uh, fundraising. Uh, I would like to quote uh, a very kind note left by one of the donors. Uh, he or she said, uh, EML webinar makes me feel young again. I mean, with the uh, emerging of the so-called metaverse recently, probably some of us have been thinking about the feel young or at least look young in the metaverse, but uh, you don't have to wait, okay? Come to EML webinar, feel young right now and for real. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, this person is an older person <laughs> or maybe older generation <laughs> at least. Okay, uh, by that, let me turn it over back to Pradeep uh, to introduce our speaker. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the 40th seminar in the EML series. So I, you already have some background from Jimmy and Zigang and Tang. And uh, as uh, Zigang mentioned, this seminar was launched right in the middle of the pandemic, I think around May of 2020. And rest of course is all history. Despite being just a year and a half old, I would echo what uh, has been already said is kind of now become an integral part of, of the mechanics community. So today it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Han Ching Jiang from Westlake University as our speaker today. So um, before he begins his talk, let me say a few words about his background. Han Ching did his PhD from Tsinghua University 
2001 uh, from Professor Casey Huang in solid mechanics. And then he went on to uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign where he uh, spent quite a bit of time working with uh, Professor Yonggang Huang. Uh, and that's where he got introduced to many of his uh, topics that he since worked on for many years, like structural electronics. In fact, he initiated a collaboration with John Rogers right at that time. Um, after his postdoctoral work at Urbana-Champaign, he joined uh, Arizona State University uh, at 2006, and he spent almost all of his career there so far. Just this year, only a few months ago, he joined the West Tech University in China. He has, uh, has received many accolades. He's a, he's a fellow of ASME. He is a member of the executive committee of the materials division of ASME. He's going to be the president next year of the Society of Engineering Science. And as other honors are the NSF Career Award, ASME Wooster Reed Warner Medal. Um, this, in fact, this was awarded just uh, this year. So as is uh, customary for EML speakers, we conducted an informal interview of Han Ching, uh, over the last 30 minutes. So if you're just joining in, um, you can find more information uh, about Han Ching's journey until this point uh, in that recorded session. Uh, with that, uh, Han Ching, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pradeep, for the uh, kind introduction. Let me uh, share my screen. Uh, OK, um, so it's full screen, right? Okay, um, it, it is, uh, thanks again, Pradeep, for the kind introduction. It is um, truly an honor uh, to speak for the EM webinar. Hopefully, I can make people uh, young again. Uh, so, um, I will talk about uh, the origami based matter materials. I talk about some devices, I talk about mechanics. So, they summarize my group's work uh, in this topic uh, for the past few years. So this work is mixed with my work done uh, at Arizona State University and some uh, ongoing work I'm currently working at uh, West Lake University. So uh, okay. Or, origami uh, prob may be originally um, from ancient China, but was refined uh, in Japan. So origami is a Japanese word. Ori means fold and kami means paper. You can characterize origami, characterize origami in many different ways. For example, it, you know you can separate them as a static origami or dynamic origami. The static origami means uh, once you fold, they stay there, and uh, dynamic origami means uh, they can constantly change the size and shape. So before I go uh, into the detail of my own research in origami mechanics and matter materials. I'd like to address one problem is uh, what brought me to this area. It sounds very different from uh, what I did in the past. So uh, thanks to the uh, first sabbatical uh, in 2012, uh, so, so I can rest, refresh, and refocus. Uh, in, 2012, in August 2012, I visited uh, Lawrence Leomore National Laboratory. So in addition to regular meetings uh, with colleagues there to discuss topic that I was working on. Oh, sorry about this. Uh, so uh, in addition to topic I was working on, I, uh, I also uh, had a chance to meet with uh, new friends. And, and one of them is uh, Dr. Koran Konjiwat. Uh, he was a former professor at uh, Arizona State University, a former colleague. And he is a computer scientist, but his hobby is paper folding. He showed me uh, his amazing collections of um, origamis, different patterns. In, uh, so I was amazed, uh, you know, the artisan, uh, you know, appearance of his uh, paper folding. Now, in addition to this, uh, to this, uh, you know, shock of his paper arts, I was uh, uh, one particular pattern made me really uh, interested. So this pattern called mural fold. Mural folding this is a planar form of mural fold. This uh, solid line is the mountain crease. The dashed line is valley crease, which means after, uh, after fold, this uh, the dashed line remain at the bottom and the solid line on the top, the mountain crease. And this pattern can be completely collapsed along one direction. So that's amazed me a lot. 
because this pattern looks very familiar to one of the patterns that I'm familiar, looks very similar to one pattern that I'm familiar with, which is the Baku 2D scene film on soft substrate. So as uh, during this small interview, uh, Prabhu mentioned that uh, I had a privilege to work with John as the first batch of members from Young Guns Group on the stretch ball electronics. So let me explain this 2D buckling pattern. So, uh, so John's group is started with the uh, 2D silicon membrane on the mother wafer. And the mother wafer is silicon wafer, and this is the same field membrane is all silicon, but this two has, uh, have no bonding. And then bring a piece of PDMS silicon material, silicon material, and uh, uh, by actually stretch and peel off contact and then peel off this thin silicon membrane from the mother wafer and then release the string and generate the wrinkle pattern. So if you compare this one and the mural pattern, it looks very similar. So they have wrinkles, waves along this way, along one direction, and along the perpendicular direction, there's also periodic patterns. So, sorry, Han Jing, uh, to interrupt you. We didn't see your cursor. Okay, let me use, uh, this. okay, so, they have the periodic pattern this way and the perpendicular way. Similarly, for mural pattern, it's perpendicular this, this way and the perpendicular way. So they look very similar. Okay. Now I was thinking that with this pattern, since the 2D buckling was used to make stretch ball electronics, so I was thinking, can we use origami as a new platform to build stretch ball electronics mm -hmm. and it makes the whole process more compatible with the mass production method. So before I talk about mass production method, let's give a very quick review. I think everyone knows this. So stretch machines. So stretch machine is just a huge success. It's a combination of the soft material as the handler to stretch. And on top, they have this uh, stretchable interconnects and the rigid islands. On the rigid islands, you can put the functional device on top. So the heterogeneous soft hard materials make huge success on stretch ball electronics. So the soft material is an enabler on stretch electronics to make it stretchable, but it also brings some limitations on the, from the manufacturing perspective because there's a limitation of soft materials not fully compatible with the mainstream CMOS process. So the mainstream CMOS process is high temperature process by position. It's hard to choose. However, for the soft material, like for example, PDMS, if the temperature is over 150, the mechanical property starts to decay. So they cannot directly fabricate the functional devices on top of soft material. But they invented this, uh, John and Yang Gang, they invented this clever idea, transfer print. So they use a soft stamp to pick up this ink is basically the functional devices fabricated use a standard CMOS process, pick up from the donor and the transfer print to another soft substrate, it's a blue one. But this transfer print is, is also very successful to make functional devices. But uh, for scaling up, there's two difficulties. One of them is the large area transfer. So, uh, so to lower the cost, the current mainstream manufacturer use a pretty large wafer 12 inch or even larger to, to manufacture the millions of uh, uh, transistors in, on one wafer. So, but currently they, they can only, currently only, only transfer regular uh, smaller area of chips from the wafer, usually uh, one inch square, maybe two inch squares. Another difficulty is uh, the sick device transfer. So current commercial device is on, on the thickness on the tens of microns or maybe even thicker. But current transfer print can only do a device less than one micron. So what causes these two difficulties is because of the, the transfer print is not vertical pickup and place. It's, it's, it's a peeling process. Like you have scotch tape, you peel off from the skin. It's a, it's a bending process. So bending is a device is too thick. The screen will be large. If the uh, area too large, you have to use a pretty large bending uh, radius to peel off the device. So now I think you know, can origami provide a new way to make stretch electronics 
and more compatible with the mainstream manufacturing. Now let's look at this, uh, this uh, video. Uh, all right, so this is called a magic ball or a water bomb pattern. It's made from paper. Paper is flexible, can, can be bent, but cannot be stretched. How come this pattern is so deformable? It can, can change shape from a ball to a tube and get it inside out. The secret is it is a one type of origami called rigid origami. So the, the facets between the creases remain rigid during the deformation, during the fold, during the folding, during the deformation. And the global deformation is enabled by the local rotation about the traces. So there's no soft material involved, but simply using the folds, you can make the whole structure deformable. So no elastic material involved. And another one is if you use analogy, this the crease is just like the uh, stretchable interconnects, make it stretchable. And rigid, uh, rigid facets, like the islands, you can put the electrons on top to make stretchable electronics. So that's why my initial motivation in 2012, when I first got to this area is, let's use rigid origami to develop stretchable electronics. Okay? And later I moved to paragami as well. But later on, I found mechanics is more interesting here in this topic to study the mechanics property of origami as mechanical matter materials. So mainly I will talk about two separate topics, you know, experiments using origami, paragami to make stretch photonics using this, uh, the mainstream manufacturing process, and also study the mechanics properties. I've shown you several examples. The first one is a, a neural solar cell. So I want to go through the details of manufacturing, but only two points keep in mind is here we use standard CMOS process. There's no soft material involved, standard CMOS process. And also uh, since here we only involve bending. So bending is uh, easier than stretch. So make it bendable, uh, you know, over cyclic loading, folding and unfolding, we use the serpentine shaped interconnects at the crease to make the crease can bear cyclic loading and loading, folding and folding. So this is uh, the fabricated uh, solar, mural solar cell, planar state, folded state. The parallelogram is the functional solar cell. Uh, in between, we can see this serpentine shaped, uh, in, oh, let me see the, the laser point. The serpentine shaped uh, interconnects. If we use the fully uh, folded state as a reference, this is, has over a thousand percent uh, foldability. Here shows, uh, because the mural pattern has only one degree of freedom, we can use uh, the uh, power force to completely fold it. And we, have, we can achieve fairly stable performance uh, with very high degree of uh, deformability. Now another demonstration is uh, a lithium iron battery. So lithium iron battery has several parts, anode, cathode, separator, electrolyte, liquid electrolyte, and the packaging. And none of them uh, is stretchable. So here show two, uh, two, case, two examples, the electrodes are prepared by a slurry process. So we coat the slurry on current collector and they compress and dry, make it like a sandpaper. It's, 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 thriving, it's not uh, stretchable. And this packaging material is aluminum, polyethylene, lamed film. It's plastic, it's a thin metal foil. They're not stretchable. So our idea is still very straightforward. Just let's, let's laminate and fold. So here we use, uh, the one thing I should mention is the standard current collector is uh, uh, copper or aluminum. Those thin metal, if you fold, it generates plastic deformation, the property will decay. So here we use tissue paper. We soak the tissue paper in a carbon tube, ink, and then dry. So make a paper conductive and the paper can be banned you know, many, many times without losing uh, electric conductivity. So we have the uh, paper uh, current collector, electrodes, separator, another counter electrodes, and put it in, the, uh, in this pouch, put it in the electrolyte, seal it, and then fold. So this is the fully charged battery on the planar state, it's a folded state. If we use this, uh, the lineup LED light, if you use this as reference, can be uh, deformability is up to uh, 1300%. Uh, 
These two videos shows that uh, they can, because here we use the carbon uh, nanotube as the current collector, the voltage is a little lower than 3.7 volt. Uh, during this deformation, uh, you know, squeeze, bend, twist, the voltage is fairly stable and you can line up LED light. So uh, my student showed me this. I, he was so excited that, oh, can we call this stretchable uh, lithium iron battery? So the answer is no, we cannot call this stretchable lithium iron battery. Because when you talk about stretchable, which means during stretch, you do not change the height, the thickness. But here, as you can see, that during this uh, deformation, the vertical dimension change, uh, changes a lot. So how to uh, enable stretchability without causing too much the out of plan deformation. See, we borrow the idea from carigami. Carry is means cut, so the paper cutting. So paper cutting, the uh, our purpose is to make 3D architectures. You cut the 2D pattern and generate 3D patterns. And this is also the motivation of also the, the idea from uh, Another uh, piece of very important work from, uh, from Zhang, from Yunggang, and from Yi Hui's group is carigami based micro scale assembly. So the pattern, the 2D uh, you know, uh, ribbons on, on, on substrate, and then uh, release the strain, generate the different uh, 3D architectures. So their motivation is to use carigami to generate 3D architecture, but our op motivation is opposite. We want to use paragami to prevent 3D deformation. Now let's look at three patterns. The first one, we fold and then we cut asymmetrically from bottom to top, top to bottom. And then we unfold. We generate this zigzag shape. For thin film, if you stretch, then you buckle. Generate the out of plan deformation, which is unwanted. So this one is not good. So now look at the middle one. We fold and then we cut symmetrically from top to bottom, bottom top with a little connection in, in between, and then we unfold. This pattern is like people holding hands. This pattern is not stretchable, right? Then we twist and flatten them, compress, flatten them. This is like a flattened telephone coil. Telephone coil is stretchable not because the material is stretchable, because the coil structure is stretchable. We flatten them, when we stretch, this does not generate the out plan deformation. The global stretchability is enabled by local rotation at the link. We call this pattern uh, fold and twist. Another pattern is we fold and then we cut symmetrically on this one, and then we fold again along the center line, and then we apply a shear. The form is small pocket. And also the same idea, the global deformation is enabled by the local rotation at the pocket. So we call it cut and shear. So cut and twist, cut and shear, enable global stretchability without uh, out of plan deformation. So let's show you this. Uh, let me show you this uh, demonstration. It's Karagami stretchable battery. So we start from the uh, Samsung uh, watch, here to watch. We remove the battery and connect to the uh, the the carigami watch inside the black strap. We stretch from the lower arm to upper arm. Power will uh, turn on the watch. The watch can function as normal, and we can play video. Dreams are really what give you purpose in life. It's what keeps you going. Every day. As a result of the things I've done, uh, my dream is no longer just a Okay, so here the pattern we use is called cut and uh, twist. So move it faster. So let me show next one. So karagami is actually is a, a great uh, tool to make stretchable interconnects. If you consider the regular serpentine shape is karagami. Same similar structure is karagami. A spiral pattern, the karagami. So under the same constraint, for example, same contour length, same uh, 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 cross-section area, with basically the same uh, resistance. We found the spiral pattern is more stretchable than serpentine and semi-similar. My former PC student, uh, uh, Zeng Ming Song, 
he got the idea of the, his leading author of the Karagami uh, structural battery, got the idea from there and the idea from spiral pattern. After he graduated, he, uh, he started his own startup company. And this one product they, they made, and this is a stretchable uh, you know, charging port. Okay. And the, you see spiral pattern. The spiral pattern, they make vertically aligned. Spare pattern makes it really stretchable and, it, and using the um, mass production manufacturing process. And this, they incorporate the uh, stretchable battery inside the boots. And the boots has been adopted. The boot, uh, the product has been adopted by, by Anta Sports. Anta Sports is the, the one of the biggest uh, sportswear company in China. And the product will be used uh, by uh, in 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games. We also uh, did some micro scale origami. So previous is, is microscopic, is, is standing in the scale. So we also use the, the instability to make micro scale origami by patterning the, the, the top surface of the uh, elastic material and elevated the walls. So depending on the patterning, we transfer the 2D film, we can make a different type of origami, uh, origami structures. This is the uh, mural, mural mirror pattern, microscope mirror pattern. So this is elevated wall. They, they have a commensurate structure. So top to top. And after release the pre-strain, the video shows the generate beautiful, beautifully uh, periodic pattern, replicate the mirror, mirror shape. Okay, this is a 2D uh, film. And with different pattern we can make, like this is the water bomb pattern, magic ball. The difference is the, the, the elevated wall pattern is different. Here is opposite. And this is the star pattern. Here I want to talk, mention this is, uh, we transfer the entire 2D film, no cutting. So this is the, the micro scale origami. So different from uh, uh, John Yungang and Yi Hui's work on the karagami three-dimensional architecture. And they, they, they cut these ribbons, they, that, that's our karagami. So what we did is origami in terra 2D film. So uh, actually basically we started about the same time. Uh, so the paper of John's group published in 2015 and, uh, and then realized, oh, John, is, John and Yungang are working on this. You know, I, I probably need to find something different than along this topic. So here, uh, switch gear, talking about mechanics, uh, properties of origami as uh, mechanical uh, metal materials. So uh, origami, uh, the property of origami are mainly determined by how the crease pattern are made. And just very slightly depend on the materials that force origami. So origami in nature, in nature is mechanical matter materials. One well-known property is example is the uh, 90% ratio. Many of origami patterns shows this uh, 90% ratio. And here I won't talk about the detail of uh, 90% ratio because that is mainly uh, geometrical properties. Now I'll talk about the uh, uh, on-demand on deployability and the in-situ stiff manipulation. Deployable structure is structure can change shape and size, and they have many applications. For example, this umbrella, this toy called a hoverboard sphere, this tensegrity, tension integrity structure are all deployable. So deployable structure has many applications like stent. Stent is one type of origami patterns. It's, uh, and this is the, the big aerospace. They, they launched this expandable space capsule. Uh, they got a big contract from NASA to launch these capsules for international space station. Origami has, uh, origami has been used heavily to develop this deployable structures. For example, this magic ball, this uh, the bullet shield developed by Howard Group and BYU, this Batalis Group at Harvard, they, uh, they use this modular origami to make uh, deployable structures. Uh, Paulino Group at Georgia Tech and now at uh, Princeton, they developed this uh, mural tube, it's highly deployable. And this is uh, this pattern called, uh, uh, this pattern called the uh, crisping pattern or triangulated cylinder pattern is highly uh, deployable. They all great in terms of deployable, deployability. But one problem is the deployable structure is not stable. And small falls, small per perturbation will get the structure back. It cannot bear load. So the question is, can we design a mechanical matter material with on-demand deployability and the selective collapsibility? 
So we start from this crystalline pattern. The crystalline pattern we, on a planar state, we can use three parameters described. One length A, two angles alpha beta. We can use these three parameters to fully describe this planar state. On the four day state, a cylinder tube, we can also use three parameters, height H, angle phi, which shows the relative angle between two neighboring layers and the radius R. We can use these three parameters to describe the pattern. Now we have three for planar and three for folded state. They look fine. But one problem is we have only one planar state, but we have many folded state, which means this is the deformable origami. We need a new parameter to describe this. So we introduce a string. The string, we use the trust model to model to, to get a string. So in the trust model, we can use energy method to get the folded state. So here shows the pattern with the angle 30, 38, and this shows the energy and strain as a function of height. So this is the fully collapsed state, complete collapsed state. This is the completely deployed state. In between, we have many uh, uh, folded, uh, folded state. Here shows some features. One is, is bad stable state, is equilibrium, equilibrium, the fully collapsed, the fully deployed, they are uh, stable states. And the strain during the folding process is uh, small, less than 1%. So it's unnoticeable for paper. Another one is a single pass. So deploy, uh, uh, collapse, same way, same way back. So it does not possess on demand or selective deployability or collapsibility. So, and also another one is the barrier is 1.5, it's quite small. And this pattern cannot bear load. Small load will collapse this. So, and the, the, let's see a different pattern. This pattern, the angle is different, 50, 50. It compares to same height, same layers, four layers, only difference is angle. Now let's see the energy analysis. So, different feature. So first one is the deploy process becomes autonomous. It's an energy release process. So from the completely collapse to, to deploy state is autonomous process. Okay, another feature, the energy barrier, if you go back, the energy barrier is 1,000, which is a 600 times higher than the previous the pattern. Another one is the strain is very large. The strain is over 10% and people cannot bear. That's why this pattern was not studied by the artists on the crystal pattern, because to them, this pattern is not affordable. The paper cannot bear as much strain, cannot be collapsed. But for us, this pattern can bear load. Okay. Another interesting feature is the strain varies. So for AC member, for example, this AC member, for the majority part of the deploy process, the strain is positive. Right before reaching the totally uh, deploy state, the strain change sign from positive to negative. Now this is interesting. The BC shows, the AB shows the opposite trend. So uh, we were thinking, can we use this feature to design on-demand deployable and uh, classable structures? So if we assign AC has asymmetric uh, tension compression behavior, so we can make this process easier and make the uh, collapse process harder. So we assign asymmetric property for AC member, easy to stretch and hard to compress. Now we show an interesting uh, feature. So for energy, so the deployee is from four, three, five, one. It's still an autonomous process, energy release process. And going back, the two paths, two passes, one is the same way back, one, five, three, four. Another one is one, two, three, four. If you compare this two, this, this pass, the energy barrier is three, four orders higher than the previous one. And the strain during the deploy process is all taken by the AC member. The other members have no strain. So now we achieve autonomous deploy and a selective collapse. Now, if you see the energy, uh, energy profile, is the energy as, uh, as function of phi, phi is the angle between two layers, and the height, we see the deploy process is, is, is uh, 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 green, uh, blue, 
follow the, the energy favorable path for all three, five, one. It's one is the, the equilibrium state, the total uh, totally uh, deployed state. And the theory back is also energy favorable. If you want to have the different paths, you completely, you, you directly compress the energy jumps from one to two, the energy increase a lot. Okay. Another feature we found that from the easy way back from one to five, the one does not have a highest height. The highest height is at five. So from easy way back is we change the angle five. From one to five, we change angle five, which means we twist, we twist to make it going back. So this is a coupled actual deformation and the twins deformation. So this further shows the side wheel shows the pass one is the hard way back with directly compress. So energy barrier is high. The class pass two is with twins. We make it taller and then compress. It's an easy way back. So experiments, how to achieve this. So uh, the hard one is AC member. So we use a spring inside a tube structure. When you stretch the spring, you carry the load. Easy to stretch. When you compress the tube, you bury the load. Too hard to compress. And for the, uh, for the joints, we use uh, the socket ball structure to make it uh, uh, smooth. This is uh, the side view shows the uh, totally deployed state. This is a complete uh, clap state. Here, this video shows the, the feature of deformation. So you twist, get it back easily. So it's a coupled twisting uh, axial and twist deformation. Deploy is the autonomous. If you compress directly, it's very hard to compress. Okay. So my student brought this one to, to gym. This one carry load. Uh, he can step on it. And this structure can carry more than 2,500 pounds. And this is self weight, it's only uh, 40, 50 gram. So uh, another feature of this uh, crystal pattern, as mentioned, is uh, coupled axial and twisting deformation. And uh, if you consider this, uh, the, the tube as our arm, our arm can do twisting, can do bending, can do contraction, can be coupled and can be decoupled. So uh, now I ask question is how to uncouple the axial and twin deformation and add bending mode. So as we mentioned, this uh, coupled axial and twin deformation is energy favorable. Now how to break this uh, energy favorable pass is we add a stronger term to break this, this pass. On this cell, we add a small pouch. So the pouch, we inflate the pouch like this, we add a stronger term as a breaker to, to, uh, to lead to bending. So this video shows now we have three modes, contraction, twisting, and bending. Here's one layer. So we, uh, we pressurize the pouch and then we vacuum the main chamber. When we vacuum the main chamber, you can see we have twisting and then we have bending, okay? Now with this, we have multi layers, we can achieve uh, this single layer. So if we do not pressurize the pouch, we can still have a coupled twisting and uh, uh, contraction. If we uh, pressurize the pouch, like 80 uh, kilopascal, we can uh, have coupled twisting and bending. Then you have multi layers, we can have pure contraction. So here we have two layers, so the two layers, uh, it has different chiral structure. One rotates clockwise, another one rotates counterclockwise. So in between, they cancel out the uh, twisting. Here we have still have a little bit of twisting because the, the manufacturing error. So here we do not uh, pressurize the pouch, just vacuum the main chamber. Now we also achieve pure bending. Pure bending is we pressurize the pouch. We pressure the pouch. On certain level, we vacuum the main chamber. 
vacuum main chamber, the, the twisting is very small. It's like a seven degree is because of manufacturing error. We're still uh, fine tuning the experiment. So with this, we can have this uh, deformation map. So uh, contraction, twisting, bending deformation. So there are some other works, for example, uh, uh, Rick Zhao and uh, uh, Augustus Paulino's work. Uh, they have this uh, coupled bending and twisting mode. They also have the three-way coupled. But here, what we can achieve is we can achieve decoupled pure contraction, pure bending, pure twisting, and coupled two ways or three ways. And this is the ongoing work I'm still working at Westlake. Now, last topic is in situ stiffening manipulation using a uh, curved origami. Why we need to, to tune the stiffness? Short answer is we tune motion, save energy, and deliver high power. For example, the firm suspension used for a uh, sports car for better performance. Passenger car, we have soft suspension. Steep shoes for sprint, soft shoes for marathon. And this click beetle has a particular mechanism to release the energy suddenly using the negative stiffness to, for, jump, for jumping. Origami has been used uh, to make uh, tunable stiffness. This is uh, Itai Cohen's work. And they started from the mural pattern. They make defects like dislocations, depending on the number of defects and the uh, spacing of defects, they can tune the stiffness. And this is uh, again, um, Paulino's work. Uh, depending on the percentage of extension, the stiffness can be tuned. And this other our work, by changing the folding pattern, we can change the stiffness. So this work are all great, but one a problem is the, they can limit the range of tunability. The only tune is always in, in positive stiffness range, cannot tune from negative to zero to positive. Also, once you have pattern, it's hard to do in situ uh, switching. So there are many reasons may lead to these limitations, but at least one reason is the existing work based on rigid origami, majority based on rigid origami, and particularly they are all based on straight crease origami. So the energy mainly stored at the creases, so the bending energy. So the energy landscape is relatively simple. So the stiff, stiffness, uh, stiffness response is relatively simple. So our motivation is to make in situ manipulation cover all ranges from positive zero to negative. And they want to have a design as simple as possible. They do not want to involve you know, complicated mechanism, simple design. So why we uh, came up with a curved origami concept? Let's see the end to the, let's see the response of force if we compress the pattern. So uh, we compare uh, three patterns. The first one is has only one crease and the crease perpendicular to loading direction. If we compress the, the bending at about the crease provides the resistance. So the force increasing provides a positive stiffness and unloading goes back has the plus deformation. And this plus deformation is needed for origami. The origami needs to hold a shape. And the second loading follows this path. Now, lesson from this pattern is the positive stiffness coming from the crease perpendicular to the loading direction. Now, this pattern has four creases. It's one of the simplest pattern, one vortex, four creases, two creases about perpendicular to the loading direction, and two creases about a line along its loading direction. Upon compression, the force increasing provides a positive stiffness. And right over here, the, the force drops, provides a negative stiffness because the snap through about these uh, vertical creases. Okay? And then the loading and loading follow, follow this. So here, this pattern does provide positive and negative stiffness. However, the second loading follows this path and the next stiffening does not reappear because we are, this already exceeds is, is, is the critical point for snap through. So let's do the bending mode. Bending is simple, right? Bending is elastic, no hysteresis, no uh, plastic formation, and provides a positive stiffness. Now, if you compare these two, if we replace this crease with a continuous smooth panel for bending, because both of them provide this crease and this panel provide positive stiffness and replace this kinked straight crease to a curved crease. And this provides a negative stiffness. 
Okay. And another one is between two points, we can have multiple curvatures. And depending on which curvature, which crease is activated, for one provides a certain range, provides a negative stiffness, two provides a zero stiffness, three provides positive stiffness. Okay. And the, from this uh, false response, we can find that the, the bending force provides a positive stiffness. The bending about the uh, bending is from this panel. Bending provides the positive stiffness. And the folding about the crease provides negative stiffness, as we expected. The global response of origami curve origami pattern is computation between these two mechanisms. So let's see the, the uh, face diagram. So the stiffness of global curve origami depends on the crease modulus. You can consider this one as the thickness or the depth of the cut, the crease, uh, the curved crease and the curvature. So uh, practically, it may be easier to fix the modulus and uh, change the curvature in situ. So by changing the uh, curvature in situ, we cover negative zero and the positive stiffness range. This phase diagram provides a way to design curve origami. So we are going to use this to design several, uh, demonstrate several applications. This is a universal gripper, has two parts. One is handler. Handler, when this uh, dash line is activated, it provides a negative stiffness. The clipper at contact with the object has always has a positive stiffness. So now, now we have two modes. When the handler activates this negative stiffness, it provides a negative on mode negative stiffness for, for high power gripping. And when this one was deactivated, it's uh, the off mode provides a positive stiffness. Let me show you this video. So we grip a Lego piece with off mode. So off mode, we can precisely grab an object. So on mode is fast, on mode is high power gripping. We can grab this piece of Lego without any problem. Let's green uh, a piece of rice, a green rice. Off mode, we can get it. Very small object. So the off mode provides a precise motion. Okay. Frozen. Okay, uh, on mode for small objects, it kicks away. Okay. So, another last demonstration soft tofu. We can use the off mode to get the soft tofu. Now, for the on mode, You structure this. Okay. Uh, another demonstration is the uh, tunable force transmission. We have the origami box. We have on the box, we have the two creases. One crease provides zero stiffness. Another crease provides positive stiffness. For zero stiffness, we can use this for uh, vibration isolation. For the uh, mode, mode, mode A is zero stiffness. Mode B has positive stiffness. So we have this uh, shaker applies vibration. This mode A, you can see the object is still, almost still. And mode B, the force is transmitted. Last but not least demonstration is curved mirror for multi-stage stiffening manipulation. We change this uh, straight crease mirror to curved mirror. And on two uh, leftmost and rightmost, we have three options of crease, depending on which one is activated. This is uh, negative, zero, and positive. Their buckling transmission behavior is different. So uh, 
So if you have this uh, three by three, totally we have nine options. The nine options, depending on which one is activated, they have different motion of the false response. If one one is activated, shows up, down, uh, one, two, up, down, up, down. Depending on which one is activated, we have different response. So then we use this one to build a swimming robot. So this pneumatic driven, we press pressurize the balloon, depending on which one is activated. One one is a linear motion to the right. One two is turning. One three is more slower turning, small angle turning. So depending on which one is activated, single input, we can achieve many complicated outputs. Okay, and so the existing work for the curved origami, we tune the stiffness by changing curvature. So in reality, in real application, it's still not easy to tune the curvature in situ. And we found that by fixed curvature, when curvature, we change the angle, we can also tune the stiffness from negative to uh, positive and to zero. So uh, experimentally, we used a uh, plastic. This is plastic. We cut out a crack to mimic this uh, curved origami. And by fixing an initial angle, we, we design, we designate an initial angle and we compress. We found that this experiment, we found we have a negative stiffness, we have zero stiffness. The explanation is interesting. We can go back to the, this, this panel. So we got the, the curved origami concept from the four panel one vertex model. But when we do a theoretical analysis, we go back to this model to model the bending energy as the uh, bending energy of the uh, dihedral angle. So here, this is the theoretical model shows that the same trend as experiment. Now this comparison should give us a powerful way to switch between straight crease origami and the curved crease origami. So when you want to have a uh, more elegant design, simple mechanism, easy to manipulate, we can use a curved origami. To do analytical analysis, we can go back to straight crease origami. So how to in situ tune? We use a cable driven mechanism. So uh, this is plastic, this is transparent. This is a curved origami. We can use a cable to control the angle and the angle is controlled by a motor. And we can use a sensor to measure the displacement. This is the holder, we apply compression force. Uh, so this shows, oh, this video shows that uh, we compress, depending on which angle is activated, we can uh, get different stiffening response. So a last part is a quick uh, perspective. And there are some recent efforts to apply origami platform structures for various uh, applications. For example, and this is uh, the first one is the neural pattern based uh, PCB board, photo PCB board. And this is a micro needle array on top of a mural pattern. This is origami tensolation make this uh, uh, display uh, has uh, can be a dome shape, can be a saddle shape. In a recent review paper we, we, we wrote and we think if we characterize this origami pattern based on the uh, rigid versus deformable, like a rigid origami, deformable origami, rigid karagami, deformable karagami, or the uh, mixture uh, hybrid, maybe uh, provide a powerful way to study their mechanical properties and applications. So uh, conclusion is uh, without origami-based deformable challenges may open ways for uh, low cost manufacturing and origami mixed with karagami deformable structure may provide uh, uh, many uh, interesting applications. Um, I thank lots of the support. So my initial efforts uh, for origami uh, electronics were supported by School of Engineering, Arizona State University, and the mechanics work was supported by NSF, uh, Dr. Quidwick's uh, uh, program before I left the um, US uh, in May, and the current work, ongoing work is supported by Westlake University. And also, I appreciate my amazing team. Um, can you recognize this? Uh, I try to make it like origami. And there's a different uh, uh, stage, the photos of my group. And thank you very much.
Thank you. Yes, we, owe, we owe hunting an applause. Thank you, hunting, for this wonderful presentation. That's the, uh, that's the only, only thing. That's the only problem with webinars. We can't really applaud really well. Uh, a fantastic talk, hunting. Thank you. So with that, um, uh, with this fascinating talk, I'd like to invite uh, uh, questions from the audience. Uh, uh, Tang, I guess we look at the participant list and see the raised hands, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Ajia, Aji, go ahead, please. I think I see your raised hand. Jian, go ahead. I think you're on mute. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, hi, yeah. Jian. Good to see you. Okay. Hi, hi, hi Yeah. Uh, wonderful talk. So I have a, just have a quick question here. So uh, I'm very interested in the, the last talk about a curve, the origami, right? You can use one single input to control the swimming robot like that, right? So right. my question here is how, you know, how, how can I do that? Say like, a, so right, you, we don't have a one single input, but you want to switch, right? From different energy state, from one state to the other, and then to the, you know, different states, right? So how, right. how can you control to, to get that, you know, energy variable so like that? So at that time, we do not have a cable driven mechanism. Yeah. We just, you know, make fixed one, one mode and then pressure, yeah. pressure the, the mode linear motion to the right. And then we oh. change to one, two, right? One, two mode is a turning mode, but with the current cable driven mechanism, we can have a cable connect to the uh, uh, neural, curved neural pattern. We can uh, tune in situ. You know, which, which pattern we, uh, we activate, which angle we activate can change the, the motion. Yeah, I, I was thinking, right? So if that's, that's really a way, right? We can just in situ do two and get a different uh, shapes, right. you know, that would be great. So the in situ, the cable driven one can make it happen. Okay. So one device, you know, sometimes you feel you know, negative, negative and positive stiffness. Sometimes you feel zero stiffness. Okay, okay. Well, can I ask one more question? Sure. Yeah, for the for the curry origami, right? So you showed the gripper, right? You have a tunable, monostable to bistable. So the monostable one ratio is a, you can gradually, you know, to close that and then to to like you know, the small object. So for that one, right? So when we release, right, gonna be go back, right? Right. And then right. for the bistable one, what well that gonna be well that one gonna be stable, you know, say okay, we're gonna grab, right? You just uh, just uh, grabbing that without the when you remove the force, it's gonna be stay there, still there. No, 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 no. You, you have to hold the force. You have to hold the hold the. I force. mean, I mean for the bistable one. You for the bi no, there's no bistable one. It's for this one, not your stiffness. It's only it's not bistable. Oh, okay. It's not bistable. Yeah, because I was thinking right for the bistable, this kind of uh, grippers or actuators, right? So when you remove your actuation inputs, so you're gonna stay in the stable state. Right. Say, for example, right. the closed state, they're going to be a stable state, and then you don't need to any energy to, right. to supply, right? right? Well, bad stable is true, but here is not bad stable. It's only a, a oh, okay. negative stiffness. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank it's you. Thank stable. you again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you G. Uh, any other questions? Uh, John, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank, thanks, Pradeep. Hey, good to see you, Han Ching. Uh, Hi, yeah, congratulations yeah. on this wonderful work. I really enjoyed your uh, presentation. Also, you. congrats on your new position at uh, Westlake. So I have two questions. Both of them are kind of simple. One's more technical and one's kind of more general. So the, the technical one is, um, I was really fascinated, especially by your uh, curved uh, origami system, you know, with, with the, uh, the elastic layers and the bending and so on. And I wonder, um, you know, as a, as a way to uh, further open up the... Uh, parameter space for, for design, um, whether you've thought about sort of modulating the thickness or spatially varying the modulus, the sort of isotropic properties, you could create anisotropic modulus, all sorts of different things you could do with the materials and sort of thickness level to further, you know, add to, to the number of variables that you can consider in, in, in designs. Yeah, very good questions. Uh, we actually, we are working on this different thickness, you know, gradient thickness of the, the film to change mixed uh, uh, street crease origami and a curve origami. I think we can make it more complicated with mm -hmm. different response. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a very interesting topic. Yeah, and I suppose you can change the modulus as well along with the thickness is another uh, right. 
knob to turn. Um, right. Yeah, so that seems very, very exciting. It'll open up uh, all kinds of uh, possibilities. Look forward to um, your your work along along those lines. The, the other question, more general, I mean, you mentioned um, one of the motivating considerations in moving to Westlake. You mentioned several, but one of them had to do with, um, you know, I guess, um, you know, expanded ability to do application oriented uh, research. And uh, you mentioned certain kinds of applications that you're considering. What are the mechanisms? Do you think about startup companies or large companies? What are you thinking about specifically? You mentioned electronics, I guess, like robotics. What what, what are your thoughts there? So, uh, you know, this, this topic is all interesting, right? So um, Westlake, the, the money of Westlake majority from the donors. And the many donors, uh, the one donors, uh, they, they have a big company for uh, uh, racing pigs. <laughs> so uh, it's the Mu Yuan, the racing pigs. And uh, these small companies, small robotic companies, they, they normally, they have constant visiting Westlake. They're very, very, very small university. Very, they, they constantly make visits and they kind of chat with uh, the faculties and they bring up, we have this need. Do you have a solution to make it happen? That we can work for, you can from the, fundamental science perspective. They can bring in engineers to work with you and solve this real problem. You know, it's no barrier, there's no barrier. So in, in, that that's, didn't happen to me when I was at Arizona State that work with industry such, you know, smoothly, you know, you no know boundary. And in the US, I think the, the difference is uh, in the US, the big companies, they have very strong R&D capability. They hold everything internally. They have a very complex legal process. But in China, the, the companies they do not have this capability. They heavily rely on universities to provide solutions. Mm -hmm. And the, different from the other you know, established universities, you know, Westlake is small and is based on donors. So we are very welcome to work with uh, the industries to on the real problems. Uh Thank you, Anjing. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, Li Ching, uh, could you please go ahead? Me? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, um, Professor John, for giving us such a very amazing talk. They are very interesting. I, before, I didn't know this kind of uh, Oregon can make this such beautiful and uh, useful application to our life. It's very great. So from your um, this kind of uh, playing, I, I found. So do you think this this kind of uh, design also relate to the material you choose here, or only relate to the structure? It, and it depends on materials, but it heavily depends on the structure you fold. So we, we initially in the U.S. for the curve organ, for example, we use paper. And uh, we want to have uh, the, uh, the force response, you know, experiment. If on the force is too small, only one Newton, two Newton, you have a thicker paper or plastic or metal, you know, right? The, the response is different. So let's talk about curve, curve origami specifically. So we change the angle. They make change the angle to tune stiffness. If you use the, the metal foil, the angle cannot be recovered because metal has the, too much plasticity. That's why we use plastic. The thick plastic, the, the, the stiffness is harder, but it cannot easily have resist, you have a resist, taking time going back. So in number one important is the, how you fold the pattern. But number two, the material is also important. Like uh, John's question is, if you have uh, the gradient thickness, you know, thicker, you know, panel, thinner hinge, the response will be different from a universal, uniform panel. So in the, in the variations, the origami, uh, you know, introduced a different dimension. You know, materials, right? You really talk about materials. Now, into the new, new dimension is, is, is a geometry. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Zigan, please go ahead. Me? Okay. Uh, so, uh, wonderful, wonderful talk, Han Chin. Uh, so, um, now you must have some experience. Uh, uh, because uh, for origami, if you repeatedly are uh, make movements, deformation will be localized as a hinges. So, uh, do you have any experience or thoughts about uh, uh, failure, and uh, what are the strategies people typically uh, deal with uh, such failure? So, very good question. So, I, I don't think origami has been heavily used for you know, real and the loading engineering applications. 
Now, I can only give you one example for this, uh, you know, stretchable interconnects using from using organic structure. Uh, so use copper is not not very well. The copper, you know, generally you know decay, you know, because the crack or the fatigue. And the, the, the good one is uh, uh, is if you use say the uh, hyper elastic uh, metal that uh, like uh, like uh, uh, shape memory alloy that be, be, be behave much be, much better. We can fold you know like uh, the the products my students company is making. We can stretch you know tens of thousand times without any you know uh, permanent deformation. As it still depends on materials. Yeah. So whenever uh, a design. Uh, uh, pursued by a colleague, a robotics colleague here, uh, Rob Wood. Uh, yeah. He used a fiber thin tape uh, material with a fiber in one direction, using uh -huh. that as a hinge. Right. That of course lasts forever. Right, depending on the materials of hinge, depending on the materials yeah. of the, uh, the fiber. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So it's not not purely depends on geometry. It also depends no, on sure right. at the crease at, at the crease. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jigal. Uh, uh, Yui, uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, Han Jing. Hi. Uh, very, uh, uh, very inspiring talk. A uh, very interesting uh, topic and uh, beautiful mechanics. I really enjoyed it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm also very interested in your work on the curvy origami. So as compared to the case of straight creases in conventional origami design, it seems that the stress concentration you know, around the creases is more evident in the case of curvy creases. And so uh, if the local stress is over large, then it might induce a large uh, plastic strains or even material free, uh, fracture. So my question yes. is, uh, uh, would this kind of uh, stress concentration be an important concern in your curvy origami design? Uh, I mean, if you need to, whether uh, you need to pay more attention to the strain level around the creases in the curvy origami design. Very good question. It's true. So we spent some time uh, after I came back to uh, Westlake to figure out the, the proper structure for the cable driven one. So the paper one, you fold a few times, this uh, the curved one, the stress concentration causes the permanent deformation and the metal one doesn't work. So we end up using a particular plastic for the plastic, we at least we, we, we load a thousand times, it's still okay. Great. So Great. Also, uh, we, also we cut, we cut, we, we saw also need to cut. That's the, the power of cutting, right? The, the, the carigami concept. So the, the plastic curve origami, we cut two cracks to release the energy. Otherwise, the, even with plastic, it still causes the permanent deformation. Great. So the uh, idea, uh, uh, the idea uh, you, John, Yung Gang use is uh, this 3D architecture is a cutting is smart. You know, the, the 2D dimensional transfer as uh, so our micro scale origami, we faced one problem that we cannot reach uh, very complex patterns. There's a stress concentration without cutting. We cannot avoid this. Thank you. <laughs> a follow-up question. Uh, uh, is it possible to develop a simple mechanics model to predict the maximum stress uh, for the curvy uh, origami. For example, uh, when you uh, generate a, an arc-shaped crease, uh, is it possible to use a simple mechanics model to derive some analytical solution to the stre stress level around the crease? Um, Would that be possible? I, I think it's possible, but my, our main efforts right now is to still um, have the uh, simplified version to get the stress response. Not, not the stiffness response, not the, uh, the, the fracture. I think that's this very good uh, uh, direction to derive an uh, analytical solution to predict. Thank you, great, Thank great you. work. Thank you, Igui. Uh, so next uh, I have uh, Rubin. Uh, Rubin, go ahead, please. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, thank you, Hanqing. A very nice talk, uh, Robin Bai from Northeastern University. So uh, I, I'd like to hear some comment a uh, wise comment from you on the scale up, if, if, especially in terms of application. So what I observed is in most of these applications, um, the, the unit cell are really um, quite, what I mean is in terms of when, when you scale up, in terms of the uh, geometric compatibility, the unit cell are more or less 
quite uh, simple and facile. So my question is now in terms of a random 3D shape, say uh, how, to, uh, how, how to find simple uh, solutions to deal with this, this challenge in, the, in terms of fundamental ways. And also a further question is, is that useful to scale up actually? in terms of real applications. So these are my questions. Thank you. That's, uh, those are great questions. To, to scale up, it really depends on application. So uh, origami has been used for uh, space exploration. That, for this, that regard, you need to scale up, right? If you are interested in, in small robotics, you need to make the like, centimeter uh, scale, right? Uh, from, fundamentally, from the mathematical principle, to skew up to, or skew down or origami pattern doesn't really change a lot of the property. That's beauty. And uh, we can uh, also to, to match the 3D different shape, we can introduce a transition element. Uh, so uh, Professor Tachi from uh, University of Tokyo, and he has a tool to design the transition uh, origami patterns to, to migrate from one pattern, small pattern to, to big patterns. And I think the, uh, the real answer is uh, depends on application. And uh, for some applications, we need micro scale origami. For example, you want to in incorporate, uh, you know, optical devices, uh, very delicate on, on, on origami to make, you know, foldable, whatever uh, optical device, we need a micro scale, you know, origami. But for um, others uh, uh, like, uh, 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 you know, put on with human, we need the uh, half centimeter, centimeter uh, skills. Did I answer your question? Yep, thank you. Thank you. Very good, I think. Uh, Rika, you wanna go ahead and ask a question? Just unmute yourself. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, thank you so much, Hanjin, for this hey. amazing talk. Good to see you. Um, Good to see you too. Um, so uh, I do think the curved origami is super interesting and uh, I have a question that uh, this, when we are compressing the crystalline origami, we naturally see that uh, crease pattern is curved. Um, I was just wondering whether uh, debuckling could be used as one building block for the curved origami to um, store more strain energy in the system and tune the stiffness. Very good question. This is uh, the one topic I assigned to one of my postdocs. <laughs> to change the, the straight lines of a crystalline to uh, in different combination of the curves. But that, that's at another dimension. So crystalline has been heavily studied. You have two vinyl papers, at least two. I know at least two vinyl papers on the crystalline patterns. Um, so how can we bring new mechanics, right? So control is one thing. You can use pneumatic, you can use magnetic uh, to control the, the actuation. But how can we bring new mechanics to change the landscape. As you mentioned, if you really compress a crystalline pattern, you can notice that the crease is a little bit bent. That's because it deformed origami. How about initially, it's already curved, right? So if the curve is already, already compatible with deformation, what will happen? So that, that's the topic I, I assigned to my postdoc to study. And that's great, thank you. Thank you. You know, you we, can, we can collaborate on the actuation perspective. Your uh, magnetic, you know, is amazing. Definitely. Looking forward to it. Thank you. You were here. Jimmy, you want to go ahead? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, amazing talk, Hang Jing. Uh, beautiful, beautiful talk. And uh, my question is actually somewhat related to what Zhang asked and also related to uh, what Yi Hui asked. John said that, can you manipulate, for example, the material properties, thickness and, you know, anisotropic material property and all these things. Then Yi Hui asked the question, you have the creases. Near the creases, you have very high stress or very high, at least, uh, stress concentration and bending. But wouldn't that be the case that the creases can also be relaxed? Instead of relatively sharp crease, you can have a gradual crease, crease. That curvature can be manipulated as another design parameter. Uh, to a certain degree, you actually answered my question 
when you talk about you know buckling and because buckling generally speaking don't occur in a very sharp way it occurs in a curved way if you do that let's assume that your curved origami instead of relatively sharp creases you have gradual or gentle cre- creases then uh, you may have an opportunity that you can actually switch in the sense that if it's too too gradual then the other direction becomes the crease right than... the, the, this is a very smart idea and i was thought about it i think that's, that's possible that depends it goes back to the question about dimension if the dimension is only microscopic you know on the several centimeters scale probably we can uh, incorporate this mechanism in very small that that's you know, you know, very uh, um, a delicate fabrication to make it happen, right? Because that's, that's a hinge will be less than one millimeter. How to control, how to tune, that's not a challenge. But definitely that's a, make a sharp crease versus a, a not sharp crease is a dimension, you know, we can consider. Actually, uh, the, the crease, we call, we call it how sharp the crease, the sharp crease versus a soft crease is also the fact that we started for the stretch ball battery. So for stretch battery, the, the, the link, you compress, press very hard, the hard crease, if you rotate, that will cause crack, frac, fracture. So luckily, so our, uh, we define a parameter called beta in that, that work, is a study how ductile this, uh, the, 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 the crease is. And depending on the curvature, the curvature large, larger curvature, the, the, the crease is more ductile, can bear more cycle loadings. Right, but that's microscopic. So uh, for the curved crease, um, I, I think about a way how to uh, incorporate, but that definitely the, the factor that we can consider. Let's add another dimension. Beautiful, beautiful. That, that, so, that's, that's, that's very, very good comment. I, I almost forgot this. <laughs> forgot <laughs> this. A soft crease versus hard crease. Yeah. Uh, another question I have is uh, that's essentially inspired by the. Uh, by, uh, who was that? Uh, was it Rob Woods who uh, introduced some fibers? And so the question I have, okay, so the question I have is uh, you have the regular pattern of origami or kirigami. Mm-hmm. And even for a very stiff material like paper, you can actually gradually change the pattern. For example, pattern size. Right, right. As long as it's sufficiently gradual, you can actually change it to over over a, a, a length, a certain length, you can change it significantly. Right. right. Have you explored that opportunity? So it's um, not the fixed periodic structure, rather it's actually a changing or evolving structure from location to location. I know this uh, mathematically mathematically doable. Uh, Professor Tachi from University of uh, Tokyo, and he has a platform to change the size of the facets from small to, to big, you know, gradually. Mm-hmm. And that as long as it's uh, mathematically uh, affordable, so that can be done. But I didn't study the mechanical property yet. Okay. Could be another interesting Could be, topic. yeah, could be. So the, that depends how we want to use this. So uh, one pattern, for example, the, the magic ball, if you design a magic ball different pattern, we can change the magic ball to grab a different object. So magic ball pattern can be used as a gripper to grab uh, objects. You have, you have very small objects. If you have small feature, you can get it. Otherwise you, 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 you fail out, right? And the, the magic ball pattern are also be used as a wheels for vehicle. You can change the size. You have, you, you have, a, you have a curve, your curve, you get over the curve, you can make the, the bigger, bigger uh, tire to roll over the, the, the curve. That that's depends on, you, you have, that's all interesting application for origami. So make it harder, make it more tunable, make it more essentially tunable. That, that's lots of things that we can consider to, to incorporate uh, smart materials, you know, like uh, what uh, Rene and, uh, and, and, uh, and Glossier were doing, right? Use the magnetic mechanism to, 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 to tune. And uh, like what we did, we can use a cable driven to in situ tune. That's lots of things we can we can try. 
It's really a, an interface between arts, math, and mechanics and, uh, and mechanical engineering. So currently I have several students postdoc, not on mechanics, is, is in mechanical engineering. So they can program, they can work with motors to, to make a robot, robots. Yeah. In fact, uh, you mentioned something that uh, that's a structure that could tune itself or automatically, autonomously respond to the environment. Uh, one of the uh, EML editors, you know, uh, Martin City, wrote a perspective on physical intelligence. These yeah. are structures and, and that don't require computer. I love, to be I love this paper. I love this paper. I love this paper. I learned a lot from this. It's very inspiring, very, very perspective. Very yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Han Chi. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, uh, Vito, you want to go ahead, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> very, very nice talk. I enjoyed it a lot. Fascinating. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, how would you imagine those structures to be uh, fabricated automatically? And now imagine they are made by, by hand mostly. So would you imagine something like touching from a sheet and bending it or using, I don't know, layering of materials with different properties so creating decreases as uh, regions with lower stiffness? Uh, what, what's your perspective on this? Uh, so one thing we can do to try to uh, fabricate is uh, actually is one of the proposals I, I wrote <laughs> at Arizona State University using mold, using mold. So you have a complicated oh. pattern as long as the pattern is uh, rigidly foldable, which means you can make a die to squeeze this, uh, this metal shield, metal, metal foil. You know, on the bottom, you have, you have commensary structure. You can make this, uh, this uh, origami shape. And I saw one of the uh, soda, soda cans that was in Japan. Hmm. Soda can, the pattern on all sides, the Yoshimura pattern, a diamond, a diamond pattern. It's made from the squeeze with uh, the uh, die to squeeze to its, its particular shape. Okay. Right. Oh, interesting. So you said molding from. Yeah, yeah. Mold. It's not oh. molding. It's, it's not molding. We don't call it molding. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a die, right? It's a squeeze to this particular pattern. Molding is, uh, mm. I think molding is more like you, you pour liquid, uh, you know, the metal and the, uh, I, I don't think it's called the molding is. Uh, okay, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understood. So then when, when the, the method you said, you said it's, uh, so how, how do you define the shape? So for, for, example, for example, you, you made a substrate with a, a, a trench, right? And top okay. is a dent that compress, yeah. you make this particular pattern. Okay, okay. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, 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 uh, yes. Okay, so thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Vito Vito. Uh, before I call on the next uh, person, uh, I have a curiosity question. So I know very little about this area, but I'm uh, curious about something. So from what I understand, with, this is a general question. With complex origami, you can have multiple energy states, right? Uh, right. Where the, the origami can transition. So the, the uh, at least in material science, when you have such a situation, uh, the, of course, your, your energy minimus do dictate your equilibrium configuration, but a lot of times the processes are kinetically controlled. Is there any such notion in origamis where you actually, uh, the, the kinetics is also important. I don't, I don't see much discussion of that usually. Very, you know, very, very, very good question, very extreme, excellent question. So I noticed the uh, majority work on origami and particular mechanics of origami uh, static. We only talk about steady state. And I think the dynamic one will be very interesting. It will be very interesting. For example, if you have an origami tube, right? If you do vibration, what's the, what's the frequency? How the frequency depends on dislocation? How the, it depends on the, which crease is activated? So this is all unknown, unknown questions. So if you do, a, a, even for robotics application, if the actuation is very fast, we may consider the dynamic behavior. So it's slow motion. I think a steady state probably sufficient. I have some follow-up, but I want to move on to other people. Uh, uh, go ahead, Tang. Uh, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Sure. Uh, Han Jin, wonderful talk. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I guess uh, for every one of us, at a certain point in our life, we were folding an airplane, paper airplane, right? So if you recall your experience of folding a paper airplane, um, 
you push hard along the creases, right? So you want to make sure that the, the airplane is in shape, mm -hmm. uh, maintain the shape. And uh, that's not actually enough. Uh, you also need a certain locking mechanism to really have this airplane, paper airplane, just like a air, uh, paper airplane. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if other people have tried that. If you try to use a piece of plastic sheet to fold an airplane, you will have different experience. You will find yourself in hard place to really put this airplane in shape. So right. part of the reason I assume is because in the paper, it's actually a very nice material that it's thin enough and you can introduce permanent deformation in the crease to lock it. And so then you have other mechanisms, mechanical mechanism to really lock it into a, uh, in, a in, in a uh, airplane shape. Right. Now for right. the plastics, you will have less of this kind of capability. And uh, in the limited case, uh, if you're trying to fold an airplane with a, a rubber sheet, I really doubt if you can make it. So uh, this has something to do related to a few questions asked before, like uh, Jigang and uh, Jimmy. Probably also uh, as Pradeep uh, asked us, because uh, you have a different energy state uh, could be in a stable energy state. For example, in your curvy origami, uh, when you are changing the shape of the gripper, you need to add a constant apply the load on it to maintain its shape or change its right. shape. However, right. in an airplane, it maintains its shape all the time. Um, right. So uh, it seems that I, I, I'm less familiar with this area, but uh, it seems that this, uh, this, uh, this, what happened at the crease uh, in terms of uh, elastic deformation, plus deformation, um, also the damage uh, or failure of those creases, because for, for example, the paper airplane, we fold the airplane and that's it. You just, you, you don't mm -hmm. really fold them multiple times. Right. But that's imagine if you have an origami. origami device, you want to do it multiple times, then mm -hmm. what happened at the crease, uh, I guess it matters a lot uh, in terms of this fatigue, reliability, and also the, the, the mechanism you lock the position in certain shapes. Can you comment on that? Yeah, it's, it's, what you said is comment is a very important question. It goes back to uh, Zhigang's one about the fatigue, the crease. So it, it is very important. So to fold the, uh, the cave the shape, lock, lock the shape, the plastic is not a good option. You, you have a hard time to, to fold. And uh, the metal will be better. We need uh, plastic deformation. Okay? We need the plastic deformation. The paper can be easily make plastic deformation, right? So we, so in the theoretical study, we assume the pattern fixed at certain location, doesn't go back, right? The practically, we need to pick a proper material to cave the shape and can, can, can bury cyclic loads. Like I mentioned, the curved origami. So right, we, after I landed at Westlake, I tried to do this in cable driven mechanism and we tried different, lots of different materials. And you know, thick paper, thicker, uh, you know, ABS, PLA, you know, metal, thin foil, they, they don't work. And they don't even work. I mean, try a particular thickness. Only a particular thickness, uh, you know, thin plastic foil works. That one can, can keep the shape and doesn't have hysteresis. That's still mature property is the key to, uh, to keep the shape for real application. And if we can uh, have a, a dedicated way to cut the crease, not just by simply folding, folding, and we can have better control. For example, you know, the panel is thicker. We just remove a partial material at the crease. And maybe that we can achieve what John mentioned, right? So, so the crease is really the key to, to lock in the shape. But for the, for the curve origami cable driven one, what's the critical one not lock the shape is has no hysteresis. Because we are trying, we are currently testing how fast we can switch, right? We, we pull the cable to fix the initial angle, then compress. We remove the load, which goes back, right? It has, goes back right away. And then we can pull different angle. That has been happening in high frequency. And that needs the, the, the material has no hysteresis. And depending on the different application, and we need to pick a different material to make the crease. Very rich area, to be honest, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tang. Uh, Zigan, you want to go ahead? Yeah. 
Well, uh, Hanjin, just uh, just uh, watching you, uh, listening to you, just uh, just uh, once again, just uh, just uh, <laughs> see the ingenuity, uh, creativity you bring to this uh, this uh, this topic. Thank you. Uh, just uh, want to. Uh, it's not a really a specific technical question. Just want to see your take on uh, this kind of thing. For example, you mentioned umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. This umbrella serve particular function. Very creative design. Apparently, solve uh, nearly all the problem, the fatigue problem, whatever. It, it works very well. You also mentioned uh, uh, something like uh, um, uh, uh, parachutes. Uh, it's a totally different functionality. Uh, requirements are different. So now you try to look for new application of these uh, deployable structure. Uh, you must have thought about uh, finding applica new applications. That's, uh, for example, battery, you find one. Mm -hmm. And also uh, create a you know, deeper science um, about the mechanical geometry for, uh, in, in terms of deep, deeper science. I heard one talk, you probably know there's a, I forgot the name, MIT computer science uh, professor who essentially uh, do computer science to answer the question, what kind of uh, folding is it possible, geometrically possible, right. no material properties involved. Mm -hmm. uh, he is just does amazing work. So now from your perspective, you have to deal with so many things. Right, uh, finding new application, make it work, geometry, materials. How do you actually manage this? No, Jiga, you ask me hard questions. That's the question that I should ask you. <laughs> How do you manage all of this? <laughs> so I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning from my uh, students. Like I, I learn a lot on the fabrication from my first student, Sun Jiang, who's here. So I learn a lot from him. I, I try to learn from my students. I, I you know, I think. EML webinar make people young, and I make myself young by learning from my students. And I, I, I play with my students. I, I, I play, I love this, uh, the, the games that young folks love to play. You know, I, I don't know how to, uh, you know, speak uh, escape room. You know, the game escape room, the young fellows in your 20s, they play. I love to play with them. You know, I'm the oldest, but I'm, I'm the father's generation. I still play with them. I want to learn from, I, I like to, you know, uh, explore new things I don't know. So I, that, that's the lesson I learned from, uh, uh, from my first few years of career. So I try to have students uh, with all different backgrounds. Okay, I, I maybe like, let me ask the most specific question. The things have exposed so many different ideas. Have you thought about, you must have thought about uh, some more general, long lasting, mechanics questions you have encountered? Uh, that's very hard one. So I think, you know, I try to do, what I try to, try to do for over the years is new topics, right? So here, how to apply. So I think my logic is how to apply what I know to do something, um, you know, not uh, appreciated yet. So that, that's my logic to pick a topic. You know, I want to pick a topic that uh, potentially can be very useful. And um, has uh, as, you know not uh, really appreciated yet. So origami is one. I think uh, you know I, what interesting is. Uh, so uh, uh, Gaussi is not here yet, right? So Gaussi started up this uh, origami Odyssey program. It's wonderful, a wonderful program. Help a lot for the engineer society. And I got a similar idea in the same time, 2012, when I was on sabbatical. I think that's that's a coincidence. I uh, try to uh, bring this art art to engineering. And what I learned over the years of origami is, uh, so mechanics, if you combine mechanics with, uh, with different areas, for example, currently origami, what I try to do is really blend into mechanical engineering to, uh, to controls, uh, to make uh, real uh, useful. So like I mentioned, what, the reason I want to go, uh, you know, came back to China is try to do application driven. For example, this, uh, this, uh, why I would try to put a pouch to, to create bending mode and decouple bending compression. I want to make a, a artificial arm, but really do some motion, real motion, not to, you know, to be believed motion, right? Real motion. So I hold up a, a bottle cup, you know, with full of water, I do contraction without spill. 
I can open the doors, turn the handle, put the key in the keyhole, turn the key. That all everything that I can do incorporate with the computer vision. You know that that's that's my motivation. But I didn't you know thought about you know that's that, that's my bad. I didn't thought about you know, what the new uh, uh, in depth uh, mechanics <laughs> I can I can contribute to the to the community. Uh, but hopefully along the way I can figure out uh, some new directions. Hopefully new directions that mechanics people can can contribute. Can uh, uh, can drive, not only as a, a passenger uh, to drive to to lead this. Uh, because if you really want to develop some origami-based robots, it can be soft, can be hard, and you know, Jigan, you are expert on soft robotics, right? So origami can be soft depending on which mode you activate, and can be hard, right? So this is really combination. Maybe this is a new direction. So we can people can can, can study. You know, maybe I can uh, think this is uh, the the contribution to to the mechanics community, not the the in depth like uh, you discover the a new mechanism to make the, the the glue in the wet environment can be bonded together. That's uh, the fantastic fantastic idea, right? When this is what I try to do is uh, you know, maybe have a new home for for mechanics can really drive. Thank you. So the the I. When I assign topics to my students on origami topics, I ask them, you know, don't do the patterns people already used. Try to uh, make some changes, uh, incorporate mechanics, make some really interesting mechanical property. That that's a requirement, you know. Uh, for them, even use crystal pattern, maybe make, make some changes. With, with new mechanics there. Yeah. Do you mind? I have a follow up uh, quickly on this. Uh, you, sure. Go ahead. I have a follow up too, but go ahead. It's actually uh, back to Jigong. You asked a great question. Do you mind I kick the ball back? Ask you, what do you think the long lasting mechanics <laughs> question you have so, been thinking of? I well, guess that's uh, not a long I haven't reason. thought about uh, Aragami at all, but just uh, listen to your hunting and the people's interest. And uh, you, you also raised this uh, hinge. Perhaps uh, the hinge, if you want to repeat it, there should be some thought. Perhaps uh, starting with, uh, let's do some experiment. How much we know about a hinge? Why a plastic hinge is so different from a paper hinge and a paper hinge is so different from a metal hinge. We have some, some notion what's going on, but probably that problem has not been seriously studied. Uh, so uh, that seems to be general. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, so I'm not an expert in this, and I'm just trying to learn slowly. But uh, to your point, Zigang and Hanqing and Tang, I recently came across uh, some well, not too long ago some papers by Dick James and some of his co-workers, for one of his former students, Paul Pasinski, uh, Kashik student actually. Uh, and then um, they have some papers where they're trying to use very foundational classical continuum mechanics to approach origami design. So in that sense, it is uh, very interesting because continuum mechanics is so familiar with us, the deformation gradient, all the machinery, but they're using that kind of notions to how to approach origami design. And so in some ways, Zigang, uh, I think they're starting that way to come up with a general continuum mechanics phase principles, deeper principles using group theory as well, you know, so symmetry and all these notions coming into play. So I think uh, it's, I think it's still the field is just starting yeah. in some ways, but though that in-depth continuum mechanics question you're talking about, I think are the the, the seeds are being laid out as we speak, uh, and I think that is exciting as well. Uh, of course, that has to be connected uh, <laughs> to what uh, the actual experiments that Hunting and others are doing. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I think that's, to add, that's the work I know about. Yeah. yeah, just to add to that, uh, uh, certainly continuum mechanics is a beautiful tool if can if it can be used to address the origami questions. But there is also other tools. For example, uh, Mahadevan Maha uh, at Harvard, right. he's actually been studying uh, folding using differential geometry. Right. So that's another type of tool that people. Right. Can uh, I guess this MIT person, computer science person, attacks this problem from a rather different angle? Absolutely. So these are all. 
Yeah, potential like interest. Oh, something like an umbrella. So in the past, people ha have a discipline. It's called either called a kinematics or mechanisms. Mechanism. Essentially, mechanism. yeah. It's a rigid mechanism. body motion with a right. uh, with, with the joints. Right. So of course, uh, kira, uh, yeah, uh, origami is uh, is uh, somewhat different from this mechanism, but it has some similarity as well. You know, in the past, many uh, mechanism people are working on origami, but limit mm -hmm. limit on rigid origamis. Mm. I think for deformal origami, I emphasize deformal origami, hybrid origami, carigami, deformal. That's the field that mechanical people can really contribute. And one particular one I'm very interested in, I put lots of efforts on this uh, currently, is the best stable states of uh, origami patterns. Different combination to reach different shape. Like you have a pattern, right? How you can keep the shape as art. As art. You can constantly <clears throat> change the shape by tuning one particular crease is reach a stable state. And it can, if you tune another one, change different state. So that's, that, that's the last loss of degree of freedom to play with the, the you know, best stable state or tri stable states. Yeah. So, I, I think um, so. Uh, Li Ching, I know you're next, but I have to call on Yong Zhu because uh, he has to leave. No listen. problem. So no I'll, problem. I'll, Just go I'll, ahead. I'll come yeah, back. No to you uh, Yong, yeah. go ahead, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I had to leave in a few minutes for teaching. Uh, Han Chin, uh, great talk. Mm. Great talk. Yeah. Every time attending your talk, uh, I hear some creative engineers' ideas. Um, <laughs> Okay, like everybody else, uh, I'm also very interested in the curved origami, right? But let's say for the, uh, for the well, let's say the straight origami, right? So people have come up with, uh, you can combine different patterns, right? You can come into some relatively or very complicated patterns, right? Like the Muriori pattern right. you have used in your batteries. But for the curved origami, right? I see it's relatively simple, right? I see you demonstrated that. The demonstration is relatively simple, right? For the for the yeah. snappers, right? So, have you thought about a complicated curved patterns? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mentioned a few times, you know, we are working on to change to replace the straight crease to curve crease, and even combine them together. Some crease in the same pattern, some crease is straight, some crease, some pattern is curved, and we want to see, we want to test test the mechanical properties. Maybe have something interesting to to find out. So, okay, but, but also in terms of the theory, right? So a, a lot of uh, theoretical work, mathematical work in origami, right? I think mostly in the straight origami, right? Like the Muri origami. The, the mathematical the, work for origami, mainly for rigid origami. It's just right. pure geometry, pure geometry. Like Zhigang uh, mentioned that they call it mechanism. It's mechanism. It's a uh, mechanism in China, majority in the school, school of, uh, in the school of mechanical engineering. It's a, uh, they, they study how geometrically fit the crease, how to fold the thick panels that they do not involve any deformation. They study the, the, the eigenvalues, basically study eigenvalues. Right, 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 right. But those is said for the rigid origami, right? So rigid how about uh, is there any, uh, a lot of theoretical work on this curved origami, which maybe- we... I, uh, as, uh, as far as I know, there's uh, very little uh, you know, engineering work for a curved origami. Okay, okay. So I, I'm talking about in the in the, let's say in the applied mathematics field, right? Have people uh, mathematics, looking... mathematics, they do have they they, they have uh, they have the, the curved origami to make how to make the curved origami geometrically compatible, make it foldable. That they have some theoretical work on mathematics. Yeah, they, they, they do, but they do not involve deformation. Okay, okay, okay. All right, then. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I think I go back to this comment to, to Zhigang that to mechanics people can make contribution on the deformable origami. Yeah, absolutely. I think especially in combination in this particular case of origami, right? In combination with applied mass, or also you can introduce multi physics, right? As you demonstrated in the in terms of applications. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Li Cheng. Go ahead. Please start. Thank you, Chen. Thank you. Thank you for giving us, uh, giving me the second chance. So here I have two questions to prove John. So the first one is about the, the structure. So just now you talk about your, your structure and also you mentioned uh, Zhigang's structure. So I'm just wondering, um, 
did you also have you ever tried to link the uh, two material, two structure together to generate the topology structure? Do you think this kind of structure could improve the function, you know, as you want, like that? Uh, so I, I didn't have a chance to try yet, but I think the answer is should be for sure you make the behavior more richer, more variables. But I don't know is the better or bad. So, but it's it worth a try. I see, I see. Um, because, you know, from, uh, from Chigong's experiments, we can see uh, microly, if we add the two uh, structure uh, interacted together, that definitely it will improve the, this kind of property, the strength of the material match. So I'm just wondering if we add this kind of two structure together macroly, also we could get the kind of similar um, function. Yeah. And right. uh, uh, yes. Yeah, for sure, it's for sure. You know, add two structures together, one constraint we should consider to make it geometrically compatible. Mm -hmm. Make sure yeah. it's, uh, their, their motion is not uh, interfering with each, each other. I see, I see. Right. Yeah, and the second question, actually, I, I was thinking about this question for a long time while I listened to uh, similar talks. Um, you know, people, some people, they are working on kind of a negative pos uh, person's ratio, also using this structure to, to, to uh, expand or shortening, uh, shrinking. Mm -hmm. So they mentioned this kind of, how to get a negative person's ratio, then make this this kind of structure to get it. In your design, I also can observe that when you expand one direction, another direction also expanding. Then the, this person's ratio also changing, right? Um, right? Then I'm thinking, you know, if you want to get the negative person's ratio, the, from the, uh, my observation, so I can see either one, you, you need to increase yeah, sorry, decrease the porosity. You have to use porosity to, to get the person's ratio, negative person ratio. Another one, or you could use the one dimension expanding, another dimension sh shrink shrinking. Mm -hmm. So to get this kind of a 2D person's uh, negative person ratio. Mm -hmm. So do you see, I just wondering, because you also do lots of calculation analysis, mechanical uh, analysis here. So did you get this kind of uh, um, qual quantitatively calculation to calculate the person's ratio change with uh, this structure changing? Thank you. So, yeah, thank you for the question. So for origami structure, we did. We have uh, the, the paper and model to uh, describe the Poisson's ratio. Depending on the, uh, for example, from your pattern, depending on the folding, depending on the angle, the Poisson's ratio can be positive, zero, or negative. So I, I think you know, I mentioned initially, right? So I, I want to do really application driven research. Let's do a product. I think eventually, and not me, but someone else, how they can use this structure for, for some real application. So uh, there are so many efforts, so many papers talking about uh, uh, next Poisson's ratio for origami structures or mechanical matter materials. I, I had a hard time to, to get the idea why we need to detect Poisson ratio. <laughs> so so why, why, why we study this? What's the real application of this? Uh, so I didn't get a clue. So, so far I didn't get a clue. So um, that's why I didn't spend so much time on, on this. And re just upon recently, I got some uh, idea we may be able to use a nice Poisson ratio to do something uh, uh, meaningful, and but unfortunately, I cannot dis disclose too much. That is a that is a project from the industry. <laughs> so they proposed to me this uh, problem. I proposed a solution, and so we are currently working on this on simulation and experiments. Hopefully, we can find a, a, a real application. The next Poisson ratio make contribution to make the structure uh, improve. I also uh, the, the the idea is to use next Poisson ratio to make to improve the, the integrity of a structure. Um, thank you. Pradeep, yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. Pradeep uh, had to leave uh, for another commitment.
So, um, um, Jimmy, do you want to take it over to host this or? Um, uh, you are muted. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you can do it. Chao. Okay. So, uh, hi, Chao. Next. Hi, Chao. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. very uh, inspiring talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, really, very interesting because we all, as a kids, we all kind of learn some kind of origami. So actually, that's uh, bring a question. So when you take a student, do you ask them to, you know, or test them how they can do origami when they come to join your group to do this research? That's an interesting question. There are so many YouTube videos can teach you how to do origami. <laughs> no, another, another, another benefit of uh, doing origami is uh, make my son, make my sons know what he, their father is doing, right? And so I, I'm doing paper folding, I can show you how to fold this pattern so my son can get the idea. Another one is origami is a great tool to teach uh, middle school students on geometry, how to speak the angle symmetrically, how to speak the angle to two, how to be angle to three. You have segment, how to fold by folding without any ruler or pen, how to separate this line to five parts equally. And there are ways to do origami can do this. That's definitely the better way to teach kids, you know, geometry. It's, you can see the geometry, you yeah, can feel it. Okay, so I have actually uh, two questions related. So uh, when you use origami to form a structure, right? So one, uh, you, you want to, uh, for example, deploy a uh, structure, right? First compress and then deploy out. So when you deploy, uh, you may want it to, uh, um, you know, kind of stable, stay that format, uh, that shape forever. Then in the other situation, you want to deploy and then quickly change the other one, dynamic, keep changing. So uh, what's the way you can Kind of control, you know, you want you can you can quickly change or you will stay that forever. And then the next question will be: if you want to stay forever, somehow deploy there. Have you kind of study what's the stability? You know that uh, structure you formed versus you just build it. So it's that something can last very long as you want, or it will be something has a limited uh, life or uh, you know lifespan. Okay, I, I think for the question, I think the question relates to the uh, uh, on-demand deployability and the selective classicity work. And by designing the pattern, we, the, the, the purpose uh, was to achieve a structure that can autonomously deploy. And once you deploy, the structure is stable, can bear load. Your, your small load, small perturbation won't get it back. That's the purpose of that work. And depending on the pattern, we can, uh, so that's, that's the interesting elastic problem, right? So it's uh, for elastic formation, we have two passes, you're elastic you know, loading and loading the same pass. But into the origami, we, can, we, uh, we were able to create two passes for unloading, right? So when it goes the other way, so that, that's possible, depending on different pattern, depending on geometry. So the crystal is only the, the cylindrical tube. You have different pattern when you do this, uh, you know, a similar analysis find a particular pattern can achieve this. There's no, so the, there's no, the, 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 if you compare the continuing mechanics, there's a, a framework can be applied for all the problems. For origami is really geometry dependence, different pattern. You have to start from scratch, <laughs> figure out the coordinates, figure out everything, and figure out this one that may not work. We, we can move to a different one. So there's no uh, a solution uh, once for all, it's case by case. So then how you actually uh, control, you know, make it uh, uh, deform into one shape, one uh, configuration and then stable or it can continue to change, you know, to all different mode. So how you, do you control that? You know, how, how, how do I, uh, you know, uh, trigger this? Yeah, how, for example, you want to just trigger the uh, deploy into one format, one mode, and then stay there, or you know, like swimming, keep changing. So, um, what's so, the the thing you do to control it? So currently, we done experiments. We just manually manually tune this one to reach this state. Another one, we uh, we, we we activate another one to to achieve different states. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, John, next. Uh, thanks, Professor Li. Uh, thanks, Professor Jiang. So this is John uh, from Zhejiang so. University. Yeah. And I've been learning from your work in the past 10 years, I should say. So thank you. And now I'm very excited. I'm feeling very exciting because we are finally working in the same city uh, in yeah, Hangzhou. Neighbor. So and the yeah, new neighbor. campus of West Lake University is uh, no more than 20 minutes driving from my home. So hopefully uh, in the near future, I can uh, get a chance to visit your lab in uh, West Lake University. Yeah, and I have a very quick question. So uh, basically the origami structure uh, has very thin wall, right? It has been a thin wall structure and has a lot of hinges. So when subject to external forces, I think the structure uh, want to deform by rotating along the hinges. Mm -hmm. And another thing is the thin wall structure mm, can also buckle under right. like compressive forces. So did they, right. do you ever observe like buckling occur before the, uh, I mean, the rotating around the hinges? Right. Yeah, that's my question. So, right, very good question. For this, uh, the pattern I'll show you with uh, these four layers at 50-50 mm -hmm. angle, if you compress with uh, the uh, skill, compress and the panel will buckle. With that one, the, the hinge has a very large strength. The hinge cannot deform. Hinge is harder than the panel. Panel is thin wall. The hinge, because you kink, the stiffness is higher. The, the thin wall will buckle. And, uh, and there's some other research using origami to develop uh, a shock of absorption structure. Oh. Right. And we, uh, we also have a few papers on this. But uh, the, the, the true answer is usually the, the, the want to, the uh, assumption is because the hinges, this, uh, the um, tube shape origami may absorb more energy than a smooth uh, cylinder. But the answer is no, actually the, the smooth cylinder still have behave, behave more regularly. The, all the, they, can, they can form all the folds. You, you compress a tube, they can form many, many folds to absorb lots of energy. But for origami, it's not. But it, it, it does, does buckle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Sun Yang. Thank you, uh, Ken. So first of all, uh, thanks, Han Jin, very much for the fantastic talk. I learned a lot always. So I have actually a general question. Uh, so since I've been working with you, uh, you have been working a, a lot of topics, which like today's talk, or I can name a few, stretch electronics, uh, stress relaxation batteries, uh, Muri, uh, origami, karagami, the topics you also mentioned today and many others. And all those topics, I, I feel like they're very interdisciplinary. So I try to, under, try to ask a, a general, which probably gonna be very useful for the, for the uh, mechanics and also other uh, communities for uh, junior faculties, is what is, uh, how you choose those topics and what is the philosophy maybe behind that you uh, choose those topics over the years, especially in probably 15 years of your career? Very good question. So first few years, Xinjiang, you know, how I spend my time in my office, right? I woke up at five and went to my office. I would be in my office before 5.30. I work there until you know 7.30 and go home, take care of kids and work another two hours and sleep. So at that time, I have no option, right? I think Tung and Suli, we can see the same thing. We have no, a, have no choice. We, we have no choice, no privilege to, to pick topic. Yes, money. We got to propose to get money and work on topic, right? We work on lots of different topics. Once you are tenured, you have freedom to pick topic you feel um, interesting, right? So uh, what I, the, the, the method I try to uh, teach my group, you know, I have several postdocs at, at my group currently and a research scientist is um, uh, along the way in the new um, uh, 60s, uh, you can see all oh, this area, you know, you know, I started, right? I'm a main player in this area. That's the, that's the main motivation and, and, and it's useful, right? This thing currently used uh, running on the road and that's uh, the, you know, I, 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 I did it, right? So that I think, you know, it's really, a, I, have, I have a strong engineering mind. I try to make something really useful at the end. If not by me, that's okay, by someone else. So uh, that's the, the the, uh, I don't call it philosophy, but that's the idea I always keep, you know, pick topic potentially useful. 
Thank you. Han Chun, I didn't get a chance to ask the questions and a fantastic work. Um, thank you, thank you, Sulin. Thank so, you, Sulin. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of path in common, you know. Uh, right, right. So we we go from from same undergraduate college and uh, and then went to Tsinghua. Yeah, we count how many years. Yeah, um, from Dalian to Tsinghua to UIUC. UIUC, and then I went to uh, Northwestern. You didn't go. <laughs> At that time, our our path our path start to uh, bifurcate. But uh, you did a fantastic job, and uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, very brave moving into experimental uh, aspect. I have one question for you. You know, it's just a yes or no question. Are you happier now? <laughs> okay, the, uh, let me explain. Okay, yeah, <laughs> um, research wise. I'm, yeah. I'm happier. And I think my, I, I brought two of my postdocs uh, with me, uh, John Weisslick with me, and they are happier. It's thought, okay, this here is very efficient. In the US, if you order a chemical, you it takes one week and get a chemical. It goes through, the vendor is slow, the shipping is slow, and the, the staff, you know, they don't call it slow, but they, they have a staff, you know, go through this procedure. But here, uh, you order one chemical, second day, you get it. Right, you can do this part much more uh, efficient. On uh, research wise, I'm, I'm happier. Um, the challenge is um, in family, okay? Uh, my, my, my older son and my wife are still in the US. I, I just brought my younger son with me. So that's, that's a tough part, that's a tough part. With the, the pandemic, you know, it cannot travel as free as before. Uh, hopefully uh, that will be getting normal and I can go back to visit my, fa my family regularly. That, that's, the pain, that's the painful part. It's uh, uh, eating me alive <laughs> every single day. So That's great. But, but, but I, I think it is, um, uh, I, I will say um, it's a bold move. I didn't think too much. Uh, I, I told my, uh, uh, so my student to make decision it's uh, you need to, you do think too much. You think too much, you, you never make a decision. You always uh, plus minus, always, you cannot make decision. You make decision, you don't think too much, you just do it. And you, you adapt, you, you adapt. That's, that's very, very, very much correct. I, 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 I totally agree with you. <laughs> I think Chen Jiang made a, made a wrong move. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for your guys' information, Sun Yang will join my department uh, from University of Houston uh, uh, in next spring as a, a tenured associate professor. So, great! I, I think guess that. Uh, yeah. Congratulations! He yeah. collaborated yeah. with uh, with Sun Lots of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, it's passing the midnight mark here. I guess it's very late for. Han Qiang and our friend, Han and our friends in Asia. So, Jimmy, do you have a, a, a anything you want to uh, wrap up uh, for today? Just want to thank Han Qing uh, for a wonderful, wonderful talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And also want to thank you for uh, serving the uh, mechanics community by being an editor of uh, Extreme Mechanics Letters. Yes, Certainly. Yeah, Pradeep Sharma left, but uh, I'd like to thank him as well. And thank all of you uh, who participated in this webinar. And this is going to be recorded and will be made available for you to watch. Uh, Tung, do you have any information on the, uh, on the live streaming? Yeah, so, um, so far, I know, uh, 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 tonight, uh, the Westlake University uh, School of Engineering is also doing the live stream uh, yeah. for Han Qing's EML webinar uh, in their channel in a different platform in Bilibili. Uh, the uh, the uh, WeChat uh, live stream, uh, the live audience is more than 9,000 so far. So we're having a great oh, uh, audience. Amazing. Thank uh, you, Tim, yeah. for broadcasting. Well, I yeah, it, it, so it, it, this is for, uh, thank you very much, uh, Han Qing, uh, for your wonderful talk and our panelists, 
uh, who are right now on the on the you, you see them on the screen or uh, they uh, served on the panel uh, during the whole process as as well as uh, our uh, uh, live audience. So um, uh, this is a place where you share great research ideas, research discussion, catch up with old friend, you know, right. <laughs> um, and uh, and also feel young for real. So come back to us. <laughs> right. time. So um, have a wonderful evening wonderful day um, I guess yeah. so we can bye now <laughs> thank you thank you very much thank you very much thank you bye 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 take care bye